This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This is all about weathering, what it is, where it happens, and uh, the amazing effect that weathering has on our Earth to create these beautiful landscapes and rock formations and terrains, uh, places to go and, and uh, be awe-inspired um, and see. And you have places like... Uh, some national parks in the USA, some beautiful beaches, some beautiful waterfalls across the world, Angel Falls, um, Niagara Falls, uh, some beautiful glaciers like in Norway and Iceland and Greenland and Antarctica and some beautiful mountain ranges like the Alps or the Andes and these amazing landscapes that are all created by varying levels of weathering on our planet. This video is going to cover basically a definition of weathering, uh, where it occurs on the earth, uh, why does it happen, and what happens to the rocks, terrain, and landscapes after weathering. So we're going to discuss briefly uh, the types and what happens after. So weathering is the breaking down of rock over time. Now, as it's broken down, the uh, rock material is in smaller pieces. So you can have this huge mountain, okay, on the Earth's surface, on the crust. It's a huge mountain. And over a long time period, let's just say one million years, every day um, it's exposed to the elements and the mountain is slowly but surely broken down and cracks appear, slices come off, gravity takes hold, and parts of the rock actually start to break apart and fall down. So you have these little boulders and rocks here. So eventually, over time, what you have is a much smaller, lower elevation, less extreme relief on this landscape because weathering has taken away this area this amount of rock from the mountain and has placed it either side and it's been removed. Now, weathering is the breaking down of this material all over the world at different rates. Now, if I say rates, I mean different speeds at which this occurs or this happens. And the rate can uh, be different in different parts of the world through a set of factors. So a set of factors can control how fast this weathering process occurs on the Earth's surface. So where does this occur? This occurs on the Earth's surface. So here's, here's the Earth's surface. There we are. So whether it's flat or it has um, some hills or it has some mountains, or it has some valleys, wherever the terrain is or landscape is, it occurs on the Earth's surface. Now, why? Well, because this area on the Earth's surface is exposed to the elements. Okay? So, what are the elements? The elements basically is uh, everything to do with climate, which is our long-term average weather conditions, obviously our daily weather. And this would include things like wind, uh, direction of wind, strength of wind, uh, looking at air temperature. Then we're going to discuss, obviously, versus day, day temperatures versus night temperatures. And we can also look at the climate as the, uh, the tilt, and the inclination, and then we can look at the seasons, and based on latitude of where that location is, compared to the equator or the North and South Pole, that would dictate, obviously, the wind direction, dictate the, the current weather conditions, or dictate the season, and uh, in terms of weather, we're looking at a big thing, which is precipitation which really is the crux of this and the presence of uh, water, the presence of any kind of acids like uh, H2CO3 
or CO2, which is very weak, and the combination of these acids in the precipitation, and also looking at uh, the ice and snow and glaciers. Again, again, that's related to latitude and seasons. And all of these different, even, you know, even air pressure can play a part. All of these conditions are constantly working on a rock that is located on the Earth's surface. And how it gets there? Well, um, you can have uh, basically is due to, let's say, we can look at tectonics as a major force of moving rock and moving plates and moving large areas of crust. We can look at um, various uh, up rising, okay, and movement of rock from deep down in the Earth's interior up to and towards the surface to create what's called outcrops and obviously exposure of the bedrock. Okay, so once you have um, an even uh, sorry, even deposition, like with some cemetery rocks, of they're deposited in a certain area on the surface, so they're exposed to the elements. So this placement plus the elements can dictate the rate of weathering. So the rate being the speed and how fast things can... Um, weather away and break down that's based on also the um the rock composition in terms of its strength in terms of elements that and uh minerals that is inside the rock and also this can lead to one thing that's called differentiation or differential differential weathering where a certain area or landscape would be weathered uh, at different speeds, leaving formations. Now, this formation, this is Monument Valley on the border of Utah and Arizona in the USA. This is one of the buttes. This is the left or right mitten, uh, and it's a beautiful rock formation that has been uh, weathered over time, millions of years, uh, where this was an ancient ocean, uh, inland lake, uh, ocean, and over the course of time, and uh, tectonic uplift, uh, it has changed its environment. Now there's no more no water present, but you're left with the original, um, you know, cemetery rocks and sandstones and limestones and and all of this area right here around the butte itself has been weathered and then eroded away, leaving this rock formation that kind of you know protrudes out from the the valley floor of different beds and strata of different types of cemetery rock showing the ages, but it's basically just been weathered and created this beautiful landscape, this beautiful rock formation in the middle of this huge valley. So to conclude, we can account, we can explain the processes that happen on our Earth's surface uh, due to weathering, which can create the most beautiful landscapes, the most pristine scenic areas uh, on the planet, all down to a simple factor of breaking down rock that's on the surface through various uh, processes, both physically and chemically, and also biologically. And we can find these amazing, beautiful landscapes. So we have these three main types. One, two, three. So physical or mechanical weathering is the physical breakdown of the rock so we can use things like uh, wind, we can use things like water, we can use things like rock hitting against rock, so rock versus rock. We can also use things like mass movement which is under the force of gravity and mass and weight. We can look at the chemical weathering which is the breaking down um, of these rocks using acids, using uh, changing the elements and breaking bonds, and uh, basically creating new elements, like in um, dissolving. 
And you also have things like biological, which is things like plants and vegetation and animals uh, burrowing in the ground, creating habitats. Even humans obviously have a huge effect on the rate of erosion, uh, sorry, rate of weathering in areas. So these three principal types of weathering we'll get onto in different videos, but a little introduction of how this weathering actually occurs on the planet to create these beautiful landscapes. All right, thanks everyone for listening and see you in the next video.